thanks again, everybody, for being here. So here's what I want to talk to you about. Um, there's a very simple construct I like to use when I try to think about big picture things, which is where, where we are now and where do we need to go. And if it sounds simple, it's because it is. But it's a really helpful way of thinking about things when you can articulate where we're at versus where we need to go. So I'm going to share about seven, precisely seven insights. And um, we'll talk about that investment. We'll talk about kind of what's happening at CNN and the industry at large and what's happening now and what we think is happening uh, in the near future and maybe a little bit beyond. First, let me tell you what CNN Digital is. Uh, it is really a collection of news brands that span just about everything that has a screen, right? So it's mobile, and mobile meaning everything, watches, et cetera, all types, all types of different devices, uh, except a you know, uh, Samsung Galaxy 7. That, um, <laughs> And, um, and, and all social media, desktop, laptop, you name it, right? Um, and there's about 20 million uh, users a day around the world of what we do at CNN Digital, okay? Um, and it's, you know, it's CNN.com. That's kind of the mothership. And when I say that, I talk about, I'm, I'm talking about the mobile site, the desktop site, the core mobile app. It's CNN International. It's CNN Money. It's CNN Politics. So those are the things underneath it. Part of that investment, we're also funding new premium businesses and verticals like CNN Style and tech and uh, travel, right? I mean, we've got Bourdain. We should be doing a lot, a lot with travel, right? Um, and there are hundreds of journalists uh, on my team around the world. Atlanta, where I'm based, New York, London, Hong Kong, Dubai, et cetera, different, different spots all over the world. Uh, and then probably at least a thousand more journalists at CNN who are doing at least half of their jobs helping to build and grow our digital platforms and our digital audiences, right? Um, and we're in a good spot right now. We're number one in just about everything you want to be number one in. Doesn't mean there's not a lot of work to do. Doesn't mean that everything's sunshine and swimming pools. Like there's some, there's some work to do, but we are number one in multi-platform unique users, right? That's actual people who view us across multiple devices, across the entire competitive set in the news landscape globally. Number one in video, views, time spent, politics, social, I can go on. Let me tell you a little bit about myself. Laura got to most of this. I was born in Kansas City. My parents still live in, I'm kind of partially raised in North Carolina. My parents still live in Cary, right outside of Raleigh. I went to another Columbia for J School in Missouri. I studied broadcast journalism, so uh, broadcast educators and education is uh, very uh, near and dear to my heart, and I'm still actively involved in that. I landed a job at the New York Times straight out of school, not because I'm a genius, but because the timing was great. They needed people who, would, uh, who knew a little bit about the internet in the 90s, and they needed people who would work uh, long hours uh, for almost no pay. <laughs> and it was fantastic, right? So I kind of, it really was, it was a great job. And I, and I just kind of grew up there for seven years. Then I went and worked for the International Herald Tribune, led their digital efforts out of Paris for about five years. And then a couple of things got, I deleted off of this because I don't know how to use technology sometimes, but I did work at the Los Angeles Times for a couple years. I'm the past president for the Online News Association, ONA. We have a big conference every year. Um, and I've been at CNN Digital for seven years now. So I'm the editor-in-chief and senior vice president for CNN Digital Worldwide. I've got a husband I picked up at the New York Times. I've got a son. He's seven years old. And the rest of that, if you can call them hobbies, that's the other things I like to do. <laughs> All right, so that's me. Um, and I put this slide in, um, mainly thinking about the students. Just, uh, you know, I'm going to talk for about 20 minutes and then questions, and then um, I'm sure everyone will want to start drinking again. So, um, <laughs> so just, you know, keep questions in mind as we go through, because I'd love to have a vibrant discussion at the end. As Augie told me, it shouldn't be a problem because there's a lot of not just students, but um, former and maybe a few current uh, journalists in the room. Um, so um, here are my seven things. So this is CNN, right? This is kind of what, this is, this is it, right? I mean, it's- That's all we've been seeing for two days. I know, right? I know, I know, we can talk about this. Um, uh, but maybe after. Um, so, you know, there's a TV, there's a website, maybe there's some other associated digital media. That's it, right? No, that's not it. 
This is actually what CNN is. This is an internal chart. You're going to see these fireworks explode across the screen, and I'll explain it to you. But this is an internal chart we use to think about our platforms and where our audiences are. And I think this is really relevant to you guys, to this group. I wanted to share it with you. So, so there's, there's kind of our core everything. And CNN TV, you can put in here. We really think about it as I'm, I'm looking at this from the digital perspective. And digital and TV are really blurring because it's just everything with a screen, right? Um, there's our mobile website, our mobile apps. We've got a few. Our desktop site and CNN Go, which is CNN Air that you can watch on just about any device. Um, those are our owned and operated like core properties. Then in this green circle, you've got all the places where we, um, we play in the video space, usually through CNN Go, right? It's, it's Apple, it's YouTube, it's Amazon, it's Roku, mm -hmm. right? Then in the orange, you've got social media and messaging apps. And this chart, by the way, is going to look completely different three months from now or maybe three weeks from now. We update this thing all the time, okay? Uh, yeah, it's crazy, right? I mean, the industry is really changing. So it's, you know, um, who's heard of Kick in here? Okay, okay, good, right. It's a, it's a messaging app in the US, very popular with like average age is like five or something. I mean, it's <laughs> low. Um, Kick, Line, anyone heard of Line? More popular in Asia? Um, huge. I mean, absolutely. And, and it's not about news. It's like people live their lives on this app and make purchases and all of this. Um, uh, we do a bunch of things on Instagram, twi Twitter, obviously Facebook, et cetera. So social and messaging, that's another area. We've got people and teams and time and money devoted to all of these things. And then on the outer rim in blue, there's what we're calling emerging and off-platform, right? And so, you know, Apple News, um, where we're getting, we're seeing really significant audience on Apple News because for those of you who have an iPhone and you just got the new iOS 10 update, when you swipe right, you now get the spotlight feature and you'll see CNN pieces and New York Times pieces and ABC and everybody in that mix now. So we're seeing the traffic really start to peak on Apple News, right? Um, there's Apple Watch, there's Google Newsstand, there's stuff with VR that we're doing with Google, um, there's watches, etc. This is CNN, right? That's what it is. And it's only, so that's where, going back to the from to construct, this is, this is where we are now, and, this, and where we're going is an even more varied, complex, bigger bubble chart. Some things might fall off of this, but I think more things are gonna be added on. Watch this. So that's our sizzle reel for. Do you have that online somewhere? Is that on YouTube or something? I think so. Okay. I can find out and let Laura know. I yeah. think it is. Yeah. Um, you know, we've got sizzle reels as long as the day is. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, we love this. And the point of this is um, the second point, which is related to the first point, the bubble slide, which is it's one story in this case, the election, and you can tell this was a little while ago, um, across many different platforms. In there, it went by quickly. Um, you saw the watch. You saw Facebook Messenger. You saw our politics app. You saw our desktop site. You saw our core app, right? So these are just, and you saw Snapchat, um, where we just interviewed the candidates after the debate and got them on and just said, listen, we need to ask you a question about, you know, um, what did, what do students today need to know about you? Um, um, so it's just one story for many, many, many different platforms. And that one story can be told different ways. It can be edited and crafted using different techniques. It can be analyzed using all these tools and technologies we have right now in different ways to say, how did we do with that on Kick? How do we do with that with that younger audiences, with the younger audience? How did we do with that on Snapchat? How do we do with that on our did the watch do anything? How did that work on Apple News for us? 
right? So we're constantly thinking about the different places that we can put CNN and craft the stories to the right platform, to the right audience at the right time. So this is something that I, I'd, I'd love to, I'm hoping we'll talk about a little bit. Um, I just, I, I, I have this observation I'll get to in a second, but let me walk through this. So, you know, it's just, it's, we're all just modern journalists. We're, we're going from, and, and like I said in the intro, there's probably a thousand plus people at CNN who are not properly on my team in my org chart who are actually spending most of their time working for digital platforms. It's getting really tricky to say if someone's a broadcast journalist or if someone's a digital journalist. It just doesn't, it's not really working that way anymore. Um, this is Juana. Uh, she's a writer and reporter. We hired her kind of as part, before the $20 million uh, investment uh, we got, um, we made a big investment in politics because we thought maybe the election would be interesting. <laughs> and Juana um, was one of the hires we made. We, we stole her from uh, Mashable and Politico before that. She's a writer, reporter. She curates and works on the politics app that if you don't have, you should download because it's really good. Um, and she's a, and there's 25 days and four hours till the election. <laughs> and um, you'll see her on air a lot. She pops up on air. So is she a broadcast journalist? Is she a print journalist? Because she's writing and reporting like articles. She's also doing a lot with video and she curates an app. I, it doesn't matter what we call her. She's a modern journalist. This is Martin Savage. Um, He's been a TV anchor and correspondent for a long time at CNN and lots of other places. He has covered some major breaking news stories across the US. I, I'm seeing some nods. He looks familiar. Um, and he has this. Let me um, pop out of this presentation and pull up the video. Was it on Safari, Lewis? There it is. I want you to see this video. This is an older example. Um, I think it's more than a year old now, and I love it. And I've got lots of examples, but I just love this one. Uh, uh, there was a plane crash in Kentucky. The sole survivor was a seven-year-old girl. It happened at night. She had to walk away through the woods, right? Remember, kind of? And um, Martin went out there uh, with a producer and a shooter and a camera. And then he said, you know what? I just want to do this. I want to I shoot this on my phone. He shot this on his phone. So I'm inside the woods here, which is where this young seven-year-old sailor would have tried to make her track. Remember, it would have been nighttime, not broad daylight like it is here. But let me just show you some of this. It's OK. I'm going to leave it. It's fine. Yeah. And there's no trail, no sort of deer path. There's not any kind of any indication of a way to go. You just have to carefully pick your way. And it's a challenge for an adult. It's not only steep, it's not only, of course, a down tree. Okay, so you get the idea. And, and one of the reasons I like to show this, and I've, I've shown it at a couple other talks, um, especially when I have students in the room, which is, this is not your traditional broadcast package. Not only because of the way he shot it, but listen to the, there was music in there, right? Music started to come up. Look at the graphics that are overlaid on the screen. It happened to be shot on his iPhone. There's no, I mean, it's all kind of jittery and blurry, and it is so powerful and so good, and frankly, way better than him just standing in front of, in the woods with a mic, right? I mean, it's just really strong work. And this stuff is happening every day at CNN. And I just love this example because it's Martin. And so a lot of the journalists who have considered themselves broadcast journalists, are, uh, they're, just, they're doing all kinds of stuff. Uh, we did air that on TV, but it, it, it was digital first. It was done for digital. And we were like, oh my god, this is amazing. Uh, and all of our, everybody across the network said so too. And so you saw it on air as well. And then you know Brian Stelter, like, what is this guy? Um, he's, and he kind of looks like he's asking that question himself in this photo. Um, he's, you know, he, did you guys, anybody watch Reliable Sources maybe in this room? So he's the host of Reliable Sources on the weekends at CNN. It's a fantastic media show. 
Uh, he's a correspondent. He does stories. He's on all day talking about uh, Fox and Trump and all of it. Um, he writes a lot. Uh, his newsletter, the Reliable Sources newsletter, if you want to keep tabs on what's happening in media, it is fantastic. He writes that. Um, he's huge, huge following on social, and he's constantly on social. Uh, so what, is he just all of these things? And the answer is yes. Now, the late, great David Carr from the New York Times also called Brian a robot who was here to replace us all because he seems to always be on and always working. Um, but, um, he, you know, he's just, he does a lot of different things, and he's just not broadcast or print or, it's just, he's just a modern journalist. So I, I don't have all the answers to what this means for students and educators and current actual journalists, but I have a couple observations and thoughts. One, for students, I think what it means is, um, and this is so obvious, and everybody knows this, but um, it's just this time in your life where like, your primary job is to learn and explore. And so for those of you who are students, like, just realize that, because I know you've got a lot of other things going on, but like, it's a wonderful, magical, like, you know, incredible time. Um, and for the educators who are helping them you know, find their way, like it's, it, it, thank you, it's great. Um, so don't limit yourself. I, you know, there was another, I, when I was talking to students at another school, um, somebody came up to me and said what they really wanted to do was to be a long form like magazine writer, and that was their goal. That's what they wanted to do. And kind of everything was kind of tracking toward that goal. And it was like, okay, but what else? Like, what, you're in school right now. What are you doing? Like, long-form magazine writing, if you haven't noticed, is not the most thriving business right now. Like, it's possible to find a job there, but there's not as many as there once were. And uh, you've got all these other things you can do right now. You can learn about video storytelling. You could become an expert in, like, Instagram stories. You could become an expert and learn some things about messaging apps. You could, uh, you know, learn about, you know, data visualizations and... Uh, database reporting, like there's just a lot of things that you can learn how to do. You don't have to learn how to be an expert in everything, but maybe three or four things you could get a handle on and really explore and really learn and not try to just track towards one thing. And the thing that, that worries me, and I've asked a couple of questions talking to you guys over drinks, is that some of the journalism programs I feel like are getting a little bit overly siloed. And and you know, you're gonna study broadcast, or you're gonna study print, or multimedia, or you're gonna study radio, or you're gonna, like, and some of this is breaking down now, um, but as someone who hires a lot of people, I, it's not, I wanna see, pe it, it doesn't matter so much like what it's, if they're broadcast journalists or whatever they studied, it matters that they're, they're walking in with some experience and some ideas that are, interdisciplinary, I suppose, is the academic term, right? Um, and, and, and even if it's actually not related to digital media per se, but it's like, I've been really digging into like global health issues. I've been really digging into uh, terrorism. I've been really digging into, right? I mean, you know, those things I think are so valuable these days, and it's just my observation, I don't have the solution, but that a lot of the programs are kind of struggling with is it broadcast or is it just video, <laughs> right? Is it, and, and it just seems to get siloed. So it's just my observation. And then for current practitioners, um, I just think for people who are actually doing journalism right now, the main thing is you just have to apply your journalistic curiosity to your own job and your own industry. I, my team, this is a small thing, but it, you know, I, I'm guilty of, of, of some of these things on occasion. And my team was yelling at me the other day because I was having, I wanted to have a conversation in email about what we were leading with on our mobile and desktop sites, what our lead story was. And they said, get in Slack. We're having the conversation in Slack, right? So the tools and technologies are changing and, and how we have that internal, well, Slack's an internal communication tool, right? So, and it's, uh, people love it. And, uh, you know, and how we communicate internally has a real impact on what we do publicly. So staying on top of that technology is really key for all of us. Um, and this is, this is the fourth point out of seven. It's just that there are, no, there are no solo acts in journalism. I think we're going from, f 
from at least a perception, and I don't know if it was ever the reality, frankly, that, a, a, that one story was the act of one person and one mind and you know, uh, one great act. Um, this example I'm showing here, and I'll pull it up on the web browser and just scroll through it, but this is an example I love, and I, and I, and I screenshot it out because um, the people, the survivors of gun violence and people who've lost loved ones to gun violence in America organically formed via Facebook and other ways, just this group. They just, they get, they get in touch with each other, they reach out. Sandy Hook, Aurora, random acts of violence in different places in the country. And it's an incredible, powerful thing. Um, and so the bylines on this have people from the digital team, uh, a, photog a still photographer, and Brooke Baldwin, who's an anchor in the middle of the show and one of her producers. And then at the bottom of the piece, there's about 20 other, other bylines contributors. And why I like this is that <coughs> it shows that teamwork and really being able to have a bunch of different skills and a bunch of different expertises up against one story and one project is really key. There were different people doing the planning and conception, doing the reporting and the writing and the editing of the article, doing the video shooting and editing, doing the programming plans for social, mobile, and desktop, on and on and on. Different people, one team, right? Um, and it's just a beautiful, uh, powerful story, and it shows that when you bring all that expertise together, um, there are no solo acts in journalism. And again, when I'm talking to students, I say just there are also, there can't be any assholes. I mean, you can't, you've got to be able to really just <laughs> work well and collaborate with people and knowing like what a good idea is, and when someone has an idea that's better than yours, that's not something bad, that's actually how it's supposed to work, it makes a thing better. Um, and then, you know, um, the other thing just to say is that I feel like um, for me personally and for my colleagues and friends in the industry, things have just changed. So, like, if pe what people say about change is constant. Like, it turns out it's actually true and it's, and it's exponentially accelerated. Exponentially. These are just some of the things that I just wrote down that are, that are different than they were three months ago. You might start a job and be on a certain team and then you think, this is my job and I'm a part of this team. It might be different three months later. You might you know, be working with certain tools and you know, certain whatever editing software and then all of a sudden something else comes along and now the team's yelling at me because I'm still using email and they're in Slack. Um, the goals and how we measure success. The audiences, because now we're on kick. So our total average age for CNN Digital just dropped by a whole lot. <laughs> um, the way that who we think about it in terms of our competition, the people we partner with, whether it's vendors or technology companies or whatnot, it's just a lot, a lot, a lot of change. So this is what Laura referenced and um, the journal article that uh, led to our connection tonight. Um, so. CNN, as many of you know, is owned by Turner, which is owned by Time Warner. So it's a big company inside a big company inside of a big company. No bureaucracy at all. Um, <laughs> and uh, that there was an investment of $20 million earlier this year, which was um, basically a, a sign um, from all the bosses to just put the pedal down and keep on going. Because the growth in terms of audience, in terms of revenue, in terms of just sheer good work uh, that's driving those things, it's happening faster here than it is anywhere else. And we need to do more of it and we need to invest so we can keep on doing more of it. And so one of the things that we invested in, so they gave us you know, the, the $20 million check and then me and the rest of my colleagues on the senior leadership team all kind of fought with each other for a while and figured out how to divvy it up. And we, one, of the, one of the key investments we made, and this is just a shot of a bunch of screens, but on these screens uh, are a lot of the analytics tools we use to look at what our audiences are doing because if, we're not, if we don't know what our audiences are doing and we're not doing, thi <laughs> we're doing things for these people, how are they responding, right? And there's 20 million of them on different platforms throughout that bubble chart around the world every day. We can get better at giving the right story in the right format on the right device at the right time to the right people. And so part of that money was invested in an audience development team. 
An another part of it, we invested in building a mobile and off-platform team, right? So we, we took that money and we really put it in things that we know where our audiences are now and where they're going to be increasingly and how we can better serve them. And then this is my, um, this is my last point. Um, which is, you know, I used to say I've been, you know, I've been in digital, I'm a veteran of digital journalism and media. I've been doing it for more than 20 years now, and uh, it used to be all digital first, digital first. You got it. But it's not, right? It really isn't. And those are the words I never thought I'd say. It's not about digital first. It's about story first, and it's about audience first. Who cares if we're having some kind of internal like <laughs> debate inside of CNN about is it digital first or broadcast or TV first? Or, like, it, that, that's not the point. It's one story. It's a lot of screens and a lot of feeds and audiences, and it's all CNN, right? So it's not digital first. But I was kind of militant on that for a while. Um, I think that's it. That's it. <laughs>